I'm going to talk to you about the oscillators on the Moog Liberation. Let's start off with oscillator one. We have it set to a sawtooth wave in its lowest octave. This is the lowest note you can get. You have multiple octaves. That's as high as you can go with oscillator one. We also have a triangle wave. This sounds a little more like a buzzy sine wave than other triangles. It's kind of interesting. But here in the low end, that's a pretty beefy low end. Okay, we also have a pulse wave, and this is a pulse wave flavored pulse wave, which is to say it's not a 50% duty cycle, and it ends up sounding kind of clavinetti. Okay. Um, that is pretty much oscillator one. Now oscillator two is pretty much exactly the same. Well, I can't say pretty much exactly the same. It is very similar with two major differences. First of all, the octaves don't go as low. But they do go one octave higher. Which gets pretty dang high, as you can see. The other difference is... The, the pulse wave in uh, oscillator two is actually a 50% duty cycle pulse wave, which we call a square wave. Also, oscillator two, we have the ability to change its tuning. Seems like about a sixth or so, but that only really comes into use when we're using oscillator one. So if we bring in oscillator one, we have the opportunity to do things like your standard prog rock fifth. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And uh, we can go in the other direction too. Of course, you can change waveforms. Or you could do our favorite detune trick, which is where we just change the tuning of oscillator two slightly to get kind of a phasing effect. These are vintage oscillators, so you're going to get a vintage oscillator sound. And when they're detuned like that, it's really quite beautiful. And by mixing and matching the waveforms, you'll get different waveforms. Now, here's something we have not talked about yet. That is sync. When you turn the sync on, oscillator two is forced to restart its waveform when oscillators, oscillator one's waveform restarts. So you get an effect. Wait though, we're not hearing an effect. Well, that's because they're perfectly in tune right now. And uh, so you won't hear the effect. What makes you hear the effect is changing the interval. Changing the pitch of oscillator two forces this uh, waveform restart to be more apparent. And you're like, okay, well, that's, that's fine, but uh, it's really just giving you a slightly different timbre. It's not like, you know, the cool sync sound I know from the past. Well, if you change the octave...
you can get those sorts of sounds, but yeah, you're like, okay, but then you still have to turn the knob, right? Well, that's cool because you actually have control over um, your cool sync sound and that's nice. But wouldn't it be nice if maybe you didn't have to and you could direct the envelope there, something, something like that? Well, as it turns out, this synthesizer was designed with what's called force, which is really aftertouch. When you press a key down, you feel a barrier and you can push into that barrier uh, to add certain effects. Uh, the force effect right now is it's controlled by a switch, the controlling arm or the fretboard, I guess you could call it. And uh, right now it's set to bend. And when it's not set to bend anything in the modulation section, it just is set to bend oscillator too. So what happens? When you push harder down on the key, you get this effect. You probably can't see that I'm doing anything. I probably look like I'm just holding a key, but actually I'm pushing the key all the way down and letting it come back. So you have quite a bit of control over how that sound happens. Right now, there's a force amount, uh, what is it, wheel on the arm that will allow you to decide how much, to what degree the force affects that sync. So let's turn it down a bit. So you're actually controlling how much of the sync effect is occurring by how hard you press the keys. And that allows for some pretty cool sounds. I mean, that's... Uh So that's nice, but we also have the opportunity to flip the force switch over to modulation. And then it's not just a bend effect, whatever the modulation is set to will generate what effect you get. So let's listen. So now the LFO that we see over here is controlling oscillator two, creating the sync effect. And you can change it to a square wave. Or even sample and hold. It's not often that you get to hear sample and hold controlling a sync effect. That's pretty awesome. And you can also control the amount by how hard you push down still. So that's pretty cool. So the only thing we haven't really talked about in regards to the oscillators is there is the glide function. Which can be switched on and off on a switch with a switch that exists on the arm. That is a very vintage sounding setup. Even without even touching the uh, filter yet, the oscillators have a great vintage sound and that's some really cool functionality for an oscillator section. Mm -hmm.